how do you tell the difference between a garden variety pullback and something that might be signaling a longer term issue for stocks? So we think that this is the former, that this is a sell off that's just a normal bull market correction. Uh, what we've seen so far is that we've had uninterrupted gains the first three weeks of the year, up 7%. Really, since the election of Donald Trump, the market's up 35% and over two years, 50%. So the pace of those gains were unsustainable for a bull market. And so it's much more normal when you see some corrections come into the equity markets. And actually, some of the work that we've done suggests that even in bull markets, in years where the S&P 500 rises, on average, you get two days a year with a 2% decline or greater. So given the level of the Dow today, that means we should expect two days a year of 500-point declines. And so overall, you know, to answer your question more directly, how do we know? No one knows in advance when you get these pullbacks is this, if this is going to be a bigger drawdown or the end of the cycle. But in our view, it's very unlikely that this is the end of the cycle, just given the strength and momentum of both the U.S. and the global economy and of the corporate profit cycle. Well, you, you understood completely what I was driving at there and making the distinction between a garden variety pullback and something that is more significant. Gabriella, uh, take me through your thinking about what this uh, pullback signifies. It obviously is something we haven't had mm -hmm. um, in a couple of years. Yeah, in a couple of years. So it, it's really just going back to normal levels of volatility in our mind. What would be normal would be maybe a 5% pullback once a quarter, a 10% even once a year, still within the realm of normal. And to your question about when does it turn into something more sinister, a bear market, let's right, say? Right. It's about something actually fundamentally changing in the economy, right? Do we see a recession in the horizon? That's when you would switch and actually think that this could turn into a bear no market. No recession, Guy. We but don't see that. No, you you don't emphasize. see that, but you do yeah. see rising interest rates. And that's a difference. Rising interest rates because global economies are doing better, all good things. The interesting, and listen, I'm sort of in their camp as well in terms of being the former, not the latter. But I'll say this, you know, bull markets end on a crescendo of good news. And you said something on Wednesday of last week that stuck with me. God, I can't and even just, remember when I'll say exactly. So we're sitting on Fast Money, and Brian said markets like to test new Fed chairs. And that's exactly what's going on now. Kudos to Brian Sullivan. Thank you. I don't think it has anything to do necessarily with rates going higher. I think what it has a lot to do with <laughs> finally good news was good news. Now good news is bad news. That's a fundamental change in what we've been seeing over the last couple of years. 400 points down. Gabrielle, if I've got fresh money, uh, should I be nibbling at uh, domestic targets mm. to buy or uh, emerging or developed markets? So it's always about Foreign. the starting point, right? If, if we have a, an investor who is in cash or fixed income, then definitely adding even in the U.S. would be something we would do given that fundamentals haven't changed. But if you're an investor that's already very concentrated in the U.S. Uh, market per se, then we would definitely be adding much more to Europe, to EM Asia, and even to Latin America, right? There's a lot of good stuff out there, and investors were still really underestimating the strength of the global economy. Well, two things, Guy Dami, thank you, and I'll be nice to you on Fast Money tonight. Because I'm filling in that's not why I'm doing it. But Jeremy, listen, my friend and frequent guest here on, on CNBC, Scott Minard of Guggenheim, set up with a weekend in Barron's. He said, uh, bull markets don't die of old age. They are shot in the head by central bankers. <laughs> I understand your yep. point, and I hope that you're right, and I think that we were just simply too bullish. However, to Tyler's initial point, how do we know? How does UBS feel so secure in that the new Fed is not going to screw this up, for lack of a better term? Well, I think for one thing, the, the reason that, you know, the economic cycle ends by over-tightening by the Fed is when they see inflation really causing a problem, right? When they're seeing an overheating economy. I think that we've had eight or nine years of two to two and a half percent GDP growth. The core's key indicator on inflation is now running at one and a half percent, the core PCE. So it seems very unlikely that the Fed is going to be overly aggressive over the next several quarters, given just the absence of aggregate broadband based inflation. Gabriella, your thoughts about, uh, you know, one, one, of the, one of the points that I think Jeremy made in, in, in the note was that last year you had a couple of things working. You had higher um, earnings mm -hmm. and you had expansion of multiples. Mm -hmm. People were willing to pay more for each dollar of mm -hmm. earnings. Do you expect that that's going to happen again in 2018 or, or are we at that point where it's really going to be an earnings driven market as opposed to that 
expansion of PE. No, it should be much more an earnings driven market, not just here in the U.S., but actually around the world. And there was some multiple expansion last year, but it was really an earnings story. Um, and if we look at earnings expectations for this year, of course, very, very solid 16% um, earnings expectations right now. Yes, you get that one time tax boost, but looking at revenues, also very, very solid, growing at around 8%. So that backdrop of not relying on multiple expansion should continue, but it is very, very supportive. But how do you, you feel, listen, I know we got to go, but, but Janet Yellen sort of dropping the hammer on Wells Fargo. We'll talk about that in a minute. She also, by the way, said that stocks were priced high. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about a Fed chair, an outgoing Fed chair saying, oh, yeah, and the market's overvalued. Oh, got to go. <laughs> Bye -bye. <laughs> um, so the Fed has noted financial stability for a while, right? When you look at their minutes, they have talked about things like equity multiples, yeah, they are above average, right? They are 15% above average. They're not cheap. But that's exactly why we can't rely on multiple expansion. We have to look at earnings growth, and it is looking solid. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.